All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Christopher Clark. I'm the president of the Cornick Bridge Fire District. I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight and showing an interest in the district. First thing we're going to start with tonight is the uh, nominations and elections of the nine members for the board of directors. The way we're going to do this tonight is uh, the candidates will be ranked by the number of votes they receive. The three candidates receiving the most votes will be elected to a three-year term starting on June, July 1st, 2013, running through June 30th, 2016. The next three candidates for a two-year term expiring June 30th, 2015, and the remaining three for a one-year term expiring June 30th, 2014. At this time, I will uh, entertain nominations for the Board of Directors. Chris Clark. All right. Second. All right. First, I need to know who they are. Yep. Okay. If you couldn't hear, I'll need your name, and then also after that, then who you're nominating. My name is Michael Lowell, and I nominate Chris Clark. Yeah. My name is Stephen Moriarty, and I nominate Alan Ackerman. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Well, if you could come. Who's seventeen, Chris? We actually, actually, we don't need a second for those. If you could come down to the microphone so everybody could hear. and they're saying there's no list for taxpayers to vote here. So without an opportunity for us to vote, this would not be legal. Okay. All right, we need to stop the meeting for a second so we can register. What does it mean? I didn't hear a second, so. Second, second. I'd like to nominate Richard Montero. Second. I'd like to nominate Kenneth Richards the third. I second it. I'd like to nominate Adam Petrillo. Second it. I'd like to nominate Mike Stammel. Second it. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Tom Wimler. Dr. Gary Burke. If it's easier, come around the front right on that. And that's it. That's it. Can you find Okay, do we have any other nominations for the board of directors? My name's Michael Goff. Oh, come down to the mic, please. Where's the mic? Right here in the center. Okay. We're going to have room. Can you speak up, sir? Nobody can hear you. It doesn't seem to be working. Just, 
I'd like to nominate the following gentlemen to the board. Alan Ackley. Don't rule. Second. Second. Third. 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 Donald Duhas. Second. Randy Ackley. Second. Randy Ackley, he said. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Gary Berkman. Second. He's already on there. I'd like to nominate Tom Santa Cruz. Second. Name that in the room on that board. Nancy Beckwith. I'd like to nominate Nancy Beckwith. Second. All right, we have Nancy Beckwith. All right, do we have any other nominations for board of directors? He's out of here. I'd like to nominate Ron Uhaas. Ron Uhaas is on there. Any other nominations for the board of directors? Yes. Uh, let me read them off to you. We have Chris Clark, Nancy, Nancy Beckwith, Kevin Zappla, Deb Montero, Richard Montero, Tom Santa Cruz, Ken Richards III, Randy Ackley, Adam Petrillo, Ron Uhas, Mike Stammel, Alan Ackley, Tom Wimler, Dr. Gary Bertman, and Peter Legnos. Are there any other nominations for the Board of Directors? Okay, at this time, nominations are closed. I'm going to ask that if anybody who is not voting, who does not have a gold sticker, if they could come to the left side of the room, to, on the stand on the wall so that when they pass out the ballots, it'll go just a little quicker, please. Ballots are going to be coming around to you. There was a box of pencils on the table over on the side if people needed them. Somebody would like to make a motion for the for the budget. We don't want it. Make a motion. Move on to the budget. I second it. Okay. Can I get a motion for the for the budget itself to for the appropriation? I move um, to appropriate the sum of sum of six million two hundred ninety thousand four hundred. And fourteen dollars as a budget for the fiscal year 2013 and 2014. We have a motion on the floor to appropriate the sum of six million two hundred ninety thousand four hundred fourteen dollars for the fiscal year of 2013-2014. I need a second for that. Second. All right. Motion made and seconded. Yes. Motion to read. Uh, can I stop you for one second? I need your name, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Deb Montero. Okay. Can you turn around? Would you want me to turn around? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I move to amend the motion to read to appropriate the sum of $5,082,044 as a budget for the fiscal year 2013 2014. Second. Second. All right, motion made and seconded to the amend the budget to appropriate the sum of five million five hundred eighty two thousand forty four dollars for the fiscal year of 2013-2014. I have a second on that. Okay, we have a second on that. Point of order. Yes. Yes, we can do that. Do I have somebody that is willing to volunteer to erase the board and write those numbers up?
Ms. Montero, could you please repeat the number? Five million five hundred eighty-two thousand forty-four dollars. That is the second number. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, when you got a motion on the floor, can you make another motion? I thought you had to vote on the first motion. No, you can amend it. She's amending the motion. You have don't make sense. I wonder how many members right. you made because I wrote Don't make sense. Just you one. Got a motion is second out of four. You got to vote on that motion before you can have another motion. Yeah. <laughs> you got a legal opinion on that, please? Robert Rose says the person who made the first motion can only amend that motion. So. No. You have to dispose of the amendment. If you're in favor of it, you vote to amend the motion. If the amendment fails, then you go back to the original motion. But you can't vote on the amendments. You could vote on 15 different amendments if you wanted to. But once the amendment is uh, voted down, then you go back to the original. I can't hear you. Motion to amend that. You have to have discussion and then vote on the amendment. If the amendment fails, you then go back to the original uh, a motion and do that. If the amendment fails, there could be other amendments to increase or decrease the amount as well. But the, you decide the amendments first and then you go back to the original uh, motion. All right, so we have discussion on the, mo the motion to amend. Ms. Montero? The amended figure um, takes into consideration several things. Number one, it, um, it recognizes the contract that's been in effect for um, a little over a year and um, pays salaries retro to July 1, 12, which have not been paid. Um, it restores funding for the fire alarm system. It removes funding uh, for the 10 volunteers, which includes the training, the uh, equipment, the uh, clothing, physicals, etc. It um, brings the bill for the hydrant rentals current to the end of the fiscal year 2014 instead of paying that bill in arrears so that we'd finally get caught up with that. It reduces the funding for attorney's fees by $60,000, which is the amount um, that was spent in the past to fight the um, contract. It also provides funds for repairing the ladder truck, which I know is, um, is important to a lot of people. And it does begin to make contributions to the what, the, what they call the OPEB, which is the other post-employee benefits. This is a fund that was, um, instituted back in 2004, a trust as such, and it should have been it should have been contributed to every year. I'm not sure if the board knew about it until 2010, but in 2010 they were made aware of it by their auditor, and they chose apparently not to fund anything for it, so they're now three million in arrears on that trust. They put in one million this year um, to go into that trust, we've reduced that amount to 250 so that something is going in and then every year we'll try and put in a little bit more so that we can get caught up eventually but um, a million was putting too much of a burden on the taxpayer and raising the mill rate a little bit too much because it probably equates to about 1.2 mills for the million um, that's about it. We just we feel that you know we there are several of us that have gone over this budget with a fine tooth comb. We've found areas where where we can where we can save some money, where we can put off what we can put off, which is not a lot. Too much has been put off in the past, and we need to get caught up with uh, with the bills and 
and funding the, the trusts that we're supposed to be funding and trying to keep the um, firemen who are currently under salary, keep them employed, but also try and encourage perhaps to have some volunteer firemen come back if they choose and work alongside, work alongside the other firemen. Um, putting, you know, having a volunteer fire force in the Fort Hill station that is just volunteers is not a viable solution for any number of reasons. So we, uh, we're putting this forward. This uh, constitutes nearly, I think it's a, almost a $700,000 decrease in the number that um, was put on the floor first. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any discussion on this motion? Okay. Thanks, Chris. I, uh, my name is Nancy Beckwith. I'm a current director on the board. I just wanted to point out to everyone that we are uh, the we are all expected to vote on either the original amount or the amended amount, but the voters do not have any say on how it's spent. So uh, while Deb Montero talked about how how her amended amount came about, should she not be elected, the board can spend it any which way they want, which means they can keep funding to train volunteers, they can um, keep spending what they may need to spend for attorneys or, or whatever it is. But that uh, discussion of how it's going to be spent is left up to the directors. What about the taxpayers? People that pay that money. She care about that. That's not important to her. You know, this is a dictatorship. Do we have any other discussion on this motion? Does it come up? See if that mic's working. Just a couple questions. Um, I'll speak loud. Okay. Uh, so the current budget that we're running on is six six point two million. Something like that. That's the figure that the board came up with to present tonight. So what was the figure last year? $4,678,000. million. Correct. We couldn't make fire uh, hydrant rental payments on that budget, is what you're saying? And, we're, and you're asking for more money. I'm just, just to be clear, you're asking for more money now to, so that you can possibly make those fire hydrant rental fees current, which... Yeah. Can I speak for the board to answer your question? Yeah, sure. We tried to get the fire hydrant. No, Ron. We, we tried to get the budget. Ron. There is a, a pension. I mean, the firefighters do have a pension aside of the trust fund. Am I, am I wrong? This, the money that's being put aside is for a special trust fund. Upcoming retirements. It's not. The pension's already in place. This is another accounting. So, so they, everybody has been compensated that is retired, to be clear. Everybody that's retired. Everybody that's retired now has a pension, yes. This is for new hires, people that are currently working. All right. and, and, and she did say we we're going to cut the funding for the volunteer because it costs a lot of money to clothe them, train them. That was what Ms. Montero said, correct? In her proposed budget? Correct. But you don't, Fire Bridge doesn't take fire on um, volunteers anyway. I, mean, Not a I, I went a couple years back, they shot me basically sent a dorm right. to me, so how would you have a proposed budget for something that doesn't exist? It's a good question. Good question. That's what I'm going to ask. I'm looking for the answer, not the question. All right. You know, the board has done a lot of work, and we wanted to make it clear to the people what their financial obligation is going to be. That million dollars is a fund for the ins life insurance and health insurance for you pay for these firemen and their wives when they retire. That's what that fund is for. And there is nothing in that fund now, so we pay as we go. But in five years, if you get four or five retirees and somebody says, well, we need another two million in the budget to pay as we go for these insurance costs, somebody's going to have to pay. Now, I just got on the board and we've looked at ways to cut, ways to not cut. The fire alarms, 
we, if we could keep them in, it would be a wonderful thing. They're antiquated. There are better systems that the businesses can pay for, and everybody just about now has a cell phone. We look at where we can cut, but we're only working on 10% of the budget because we're or approximately 10%. We have union contracts right now that we're obligated to. And the million dollars, we don't have to put it in, but you're going to pay sometime because in the contract we have to pay for their health insurance and their life insurance and their spouses. And that's where that money, that million dollars, is put away. We supposedly, and it's all a guess, that it was three million we owe as of this point. So the board decided a million was a fair number. Now, if you, the people, don't want that number, you can vote it down. You can do what you want. We're letting you have the vote on what you want. But if, if we didn't present that number to you, our obligation for what we were elected for as taxpayers would have not been right. We have to let you know what you owe. And these are numbers. It may not be a perfect number. Maybe it's off 50 percent. But you still owe that money. And it's going to have to be paid. It's not. It's not going to get kicked down the road forever. When four or five guys, more guys retire, there's going to be insurance benefits that have to be paid by the contract. So that's why the budget is where it is. If you're not happy, vote it down. Um, and hopefully, you know, if we can continue on. We'll try and do more and make it work. But that's what it is, and that's what you should know. Some of the numbers that you should know as taxpayers on what you're going to pay now and later unless something has changed. And the volunteer money, is that $70,000 is in there, but if you don't get any volunteers, it don't have to be spent. And if you buy uniforms for volunteers and they leave, you still have the uniform. So it's not a big risk to try and save long-term hundreds of thousands of dollars, which it will cost you for paid firemen down the road. All right, if you have any more questions, you can feel free to ask me. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes, mine's directed at Director Beckman. So you're saying if you're handed a budget, voted by the taxpayers, including line items, and it's, you're just going to do whatever you want with the money anyway, even though it's all spelled out in the taxpayers' field, that's, that's a good budget to go That's what you just said. I'm going to have the attorney address that for you. I see a lot of people in the room who have been attending these meetings for many years, and, and uh, as have I. And uh, the way the budget is structured, the voters vote on the total. And then, in their wisdom or lack of wisdom, the directors whom you elect are going to decide how to spend that money. They have indicated a proposed budget for next year. If you approve more money or less money than that, it will be up to the directors that you elect tonight how to allocate that. There's been an amendment put on the table that wants to reduce the amount and has given some recommendations as to how that should be allocated. But that is not binding on the directors. And I think a number of the people that are in the audience that have served on the board uh, know that we've uh, been through this many times over the years. But clearly, in expressing your will tonight, you are expressing to your um, uh, your elected representatives what you'd like to see them do. I did it you'd like to see them do, but it's not legally binding. You can't say, okay, I want you to spend 5000 more on this, 6000 less on that, 10000 more on that. It's not a line item veto. You can only vote the total. That's the better one. Okay, I think we have it working again. You want six minutes to get the mic. Yeah, if you could come up. Yes. If the people would, that would like to speak, if you want to make it easier on myself and everybody else, if you could kind of come forward, that way we're not picking everybody out and it might make things flow a little better. Yeah, absolutely. Joan Steinford. Um, I was pleased to uh, be furnished at the uh, Long Hill Station with a complete, um, just, uh, but, pardon Okay, with the police, with a, a, a very detailed budget, what I'm going to ask about roof replacement for the Fort Hill um, station, 48,000, and I assume it's on uh, the, the abbreviated uh, summary um, 
where it says building maintenance Fort Hill slash Long Hill Street, and that's 144,135 on this bu uh, budget. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. The two different items. The that's yeah. standard maintenance, and then the roof is a capital replacement because nobody actually knows when that roof was placed on that building, so it is long overdue for replacement. The 44,000 is just for the roof. The 144,000 is for building maintenance. Um, no, it's not. It's separate. Chief, where would that be? She's asking the 144,000. Does that include the Long Hill roof replacement? Or the Fort Hill roof? That is in that? Okay, yes, it is in that. Yes. And, and the, the roof is... Nobody knows if it's 30 years, 50 years. It's not that nobody can find. No. Stephen Bonches, um, do we get to know how they vote on each individual line item, or is that a secret? So as this comes up, as the different things come up, we'll still be able to hear know how each one votes on every, the different things. Um, every year there's, there's budget sessions that are advertised and there are public meetings where this is all discussed and decided before the annual meeting. Betty Giesing. My concern with the budget, and I, I will say I don't know a lot, I've just had different people tell me and I've listened to what you've had to say today. But there seems to be a lot of concern, and it works this way in the city of Groton, so I understand that you vote on the bottom line and you get to appropriate. But sometimes when there's this much of an increase and the unknown of who the elected officials will be that will be governing this, if a conservative budget is approved tonight, you know, maybe the union contracts plus what it was last year, so you do your financial obligations in that respect, through the bylaws of the Waquanic Bridge Fire Department, do you have an opportunity to call a special meeting mid-year mid as to what money you need to reappropriate and do an adjustment on the budget so people who are concerned on how the money will be spent the directors will be in place and the budget will be out and you'll be coming for special funding for specific items where the taxpayers have the right to know what you're appropriating that extra half a million dollars for If during the course of the year there's additional funding in excess of $20,000 that's approved for any uh, items, uh, that requires a special meeting of the voters under the Connecticut General Statute. So if they wanted to, you pass the budget tonight or whatever figure, and sometime during the year someone says, the, the board decides we want to spend another 100000 on such and such, they have to come to the voters for approval. Similarly, if they want to take um, money out of the reserve fund, uh, they have to come to the voters for approval. Uh, but those are the only two instances in which they'd be required uh, to come or to ratify a major contract in excess of $20,000. Then they have to have a voter approval. So based on what you said, the voters would have a right to vote on specific items because tonight a budget would be voted on, mill rates would be set. And if you needed to an extra 500000 for XYZ, and it was something that the taxpayers deemed necessary or viable or required, they would know the directors that were in place, they would, they would know what you were appropriating, and in that fact, they would have a chance to vote on the amount that you're appropriating. You can't just come for a half a million dollars and tell the people not what you're spending on, on an adjustment. An adjustment requires specific items, correct? Right. At this point, um, if we could try and keep it to the motion that's on the floor, I don't want to get too too far out here and be here till the wee hours of the morning. That's already been appropriated. We're not going to bring the taxpayer in again to change the bill rate. Right. Just so that some of these people understand that that's what's going on. What we're voting on tonight, 
with this is the bottom line for the budget. Um, yes. Uh, are, those, are those the only two uh, budgets that are voting on? At this time, yes. Can we, can we add to that? No, we have to vote on the amendment first. According to Attorney Carberry, no. <laughs> I'd like to, to make a motion to amend that figure to $3,500,000. All right, we have a... <laughs> He's all flustered. Turn him red. Yep. All right, we have a motion to amend. Uh, another number to put up of three million five hundred thousand. Second. Second. Yeah, I'm not as dumb as I look. We got it. Oh, we got another white one. You don't look dumb. Hey, thank you. Who just helped get the other one? Yeah. Somebody's caught on that chair with that, right? Yeah. I think if you, there's a motion now to, to move the amendment. If you vote in favor of moving this amendment, you are not voting to approve the amendment or to deny it. You're only moving that you want to have a vote on it. So if you are in favor of taking a vote, on the uh, figure of 5.582044, you should vote yes. I want to move that question. If you don't want to have a vote on this now, then you should vote no. Neither of them will approve that figure. That will have to be a subsequent vote. Point of order. Motion 5 million or 3 million? Point of order. When I said to move the, the, the motion, I meant to move the motion to approve the amendment. Because that's a motion that's been oh, put off. Excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's been I didn't hear a sec. I didn't hear a second. I heard. I heard a second. I didn't hear one. So I'm. Yeah. I all yeah. I did. I, I moved the question or I the motion to approve the three million five hundred. Not even on the board. No, I haven't been yeah, put on the board. It did get seconded about three times. But then that would be the same thing. If you vote to move that question, you will be voting to have a vote on the 3.5 meter, 5. Okay. And, and then we would go back. And then you either vote yes or no on 3.5, and then you go from there. 3.5 million. Motion to approve the amendment. Okay, does everybody understand that? No. When somebody speaks, they need a microphone so we know what they're doing. This is a meeting of the whole, not just you 10 people in the first row. We, we're here, we want to be educated, the microphone has to go to whoever is speaking. I understand that. Yeah. If we're not all graduating from law school, if we're not all up on Robert's Rules of War. So we're here to learn. That that makes two of us. We've been having some technical difficulties with the microphones, and I'm sorry about that. So what he said was, there's a motion to move to vote on whether we want to vote for a $3.5 million budget without discussion. So if anybody wants to have a $3.5 million budget, then we have to move this motion and approve it, and then we can talk about it. If you don't, then vote no, and then we would talk about the $5 million budget. No. No, she wants to move it. Monday night wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not very well up on Robert's Rules of Order. I'm trying, and I know it's frustrating, and if you could just please bear with us, we, we will get through this. Just to explain what my intent was, when I stood up and said that I moved the question, move the motion, what that means is that I'm moving to vote on the $3.5 million without discussion. What that means, what you have to do first is you have to vote on whether or not you want to vote to, to move the motion and if you say yes you want to move the motion then immediately a vote has to be taken without discussion 
If you vote no to move the question or the motion, then there will discussion will open up for the 3.5 million. Correct. So does everybody understand that? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, by by a show of hands, all those in favor of moving to discuss the three point five million dollar budget, raise your hand. So, not to discuss it. Not to discuss it, but to move on to vote on it. Okay, now if you could put your hands down, please, and those not in favor, those voting no, please raise your hand. All right, we have a two-thirds majority. So now we are going to vote on the $3.5 million. Okay, all those in favor of a $3.5 million budget for the district, please raise your hand. Keep your hands up, we're going to count. Down. Now, those against the $3.5 million budget, please raise your hand. All right, we have the totals in. Uh, those that are in favor that voted yes for a $3.5 million budget is 114. Those that are against it is 79. So the motion passes for a $3.5 million budget for next fiscal year. The next item on the agenda is to authorize the fire district board of directors to levy a tax on the fire district grant list completed to become due and payable on July 1, 2013, sufficient to cover the appropriations approved at this meeting. I'm going to need a motion on that. Do I have a second? Yep. All right, motion is made and seconded to authorize the fire district board of directors to levy a tax on the fire district grant list last completed to become due payable on July 1, 2013, sufficient to cover the appropriate appropriations approved at this meeting. Do I have any discussion on this motion? Yes. Here we go. 
We're going to have to try because that's a number that was approved. But we, we have moved on, so the discussion is for the for levying the tax. Do I have any discussion on that? Do we have any discussion on, on this motion to levy the tax? No. No? Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. What? To levy the tax for the budget. We need we need to be we need you to approve for us to set that mill rate on the three point five million. But we need all three thousand dollars to the dis to be disbursed from the capital reserve fund for the replacement of the deputy chief's vehicle and to replace a fire apparatus pumper. All right, motion made and seconded to authorize the expenditure of $660,000 to be dispersed from the capital reserve fund for the replacement of the deputy chief's vehicle and to replace a fire apparatus pumper. Do I have any discussion on this motion? Save the money, put it to something else. We already cut the budget, so might as well use it to fund the next year. Ma'am? Can we separate uh, yes. is, is the capital reserve fund for CIP uh, only, or can that be if you are short of salary money and your checks can't get out and you can't pay the insurance? No, it's only it's only for capital improvements. Okay. No problem. The way the motion reads, it's for both. Ma'am? Stays in the bank. Correct. She wanted to know if, if the district wasn't authorized to purchase the two vehicles, what would happen to the money and it would stay in the bank. All right, any other discussion on this motion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the pumper that it's intended to be re re replaced is a uh, 1999, it was made in 1999. It has an excess of 100,000 miles on it. Um, we're having problems such as the compartment doors are, are getting cracks between them all and it's unreliable as it's being able to open the doors or close them to be able to get the equipment out. Um, it's, it's a tire. If your truck, or your, excuse me, your vehicle would last another year, we have a we have a 10 year replacement plan. Um, this was uh, slated to be replaced three years ago. I know what my old Volvo was. <laughs> it had a lot more miles than that. But what I meant was, if you're having serious are you talking about the pumper? Or yeah, she wants to know if it would make it another year. Oh, that's the deputy chief's vehicle. His, his is um, currently a 2005 200,000. I'm sorry. Thousand? No, no, no. I'm trying to think of what. I think it's a 2005 Chevy Tahoe right now. Um, that vehicle has had, we're on the third transmission. Um, and there's excess okay. of 100,000 miles on that. I mean, I've, I've got the deputy over here. Yeah. This guy, I think, the third one. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, it's cheaper than six hundred sixty thousand. Just curious as to why a new pumper is of a higher priority than repairing a ladder truck.